Uh, welcome to the poetry reading, The Poet Within and Without. Um, for the winter session, there are 10 weeks of poetry and the 10th culminating in tonight's poetry reading. And every week in The Poet Within, we focus on a new form or style of poetry. And in the last uh, session, in the winter session of The Poet Within, we started out with the Sijo, which is like the haiku and tankas, the Japanese poems, but it, they are Korean in origin. They're a little bit longer, and they're, if you like terse verse, you will love the Sijo. And then the second week, we wrote Idols. And idols are poems that are dedicated to heroes and pastoral themes and simpler times. And they're just fantastic poems to be reading in the winter. I felt like it was a holiday when everybody read their poems at the end of the class. <laughs> it's like, yes, welcome to paradise. <laughs> and then the third week, of course, because we're in the doldrums of February, we did satirical verse just for a laugh. And there were many laughs, and you will be in on it tonight. And then February 10th, we did um, sonnets for Valentine's Day, the traditional love poem. And so we'll have sonnets tonight. And then we did the ballade, which is a long, closed form of poetry that it was originally a song. And you can tell it was a song because of the refrain. It runs on two rhymes, and it's a very tight, tightly formed poem that's just beautiful. And then we did analyzed rhyme, which is an excellent kind of poetry that rhymes, feels like it rhymes, but it's in, the rhyme is invisible to the eye. And then on the week that we were supposed to do Gazel, we did the workshop poem just to torture everybody. I thought, what the heck, it was about time. And it was duly torture, right, Darnell? <laughs> Darnell vanished that night. <laughs> and then we did blank verse, which is a, um, it's metrical poetry. It's written in meter, but it does not have any rhyme. And then, of course, we always end up with free verse, because all the poets are constricted all the way throughout the course, and then they get to just go off and do whatever they want on free verse. And then, of course, tonight, the poetry reading. Some of our po poets tonight have spontaneously combusted. So <laughs> but if I have a chance, I'm going to read Francesca's poems because uh, she was here earlier and she had to go home. She was sick. And she did give me permission to read her poems if we have time later. And Ray had to work tonight, and that's too bad because he was going to do a hip-hop song at the end. And Rick and Tracy, uh, no, also known as the Slash Up Poets, are going to end tonight's poetry reading with uh, four songs, I believe, that they have written, five songs that they have written at the Poet Within class. So tonight, um, I'm going to start with reading Kimberly. I have a poetry student who lives in L.A., and um, she doesn't have any poetry class like this to follow in L.A., so she's my online student. And she follows along every 10 weeks. And um, so I'll read you uh, a few of her poems that she has written. I'll read you a little bit of a bio so you know who Kimberly is. And then I'll read a few of her poems. Kimberly Morgan keeps copies of her favorite poets beside her bedstand so she can fall asleep, dream in poetry, and wake up inspired by verse. When Kimberly picks up her pen and lets her imagination fly, her verses unfurl with the benefit of her sharp eye, sharp mind, and ticklish sense of humor. Her images engage all the senses and invite the listener to add her name to their own list of favorites. So I'm going to start off by reading Kimberly's Idol. And now, what does she have to complain about? She lives in LA. I'm sorry, she was not experiencing what we were experiencing in February, but nonetheless, she went to a better place herself. It's called At This Moment. A narrow dirt trail winds through shades of green. New shoots of emerald grass brought forth by winter rains quiver in the sweet sage-scented breeze. Soft January light peaks around army green leaves of live oak trees. We are hiking down this path, you in front, your long legs setting the pace like a metronome, me lagging behind, always behind. 
15 feet at all times, you say. Same distance, no matter the speed. For 20 years, we have wandered past this exact way. At this moment, I cannot tell where we are in time. It could be that we are in school or not. We could be living on Belmont Road, Tularosa Drive, Lemoyne Street. We could be parents to one, two, or none. At this moment, we are unchanged, an eternal convergence that does not spin with the rotation of the earth. I'm going to read one more poem by Kimberly, and it is her satirical poem. Uh, Kimberly was 36 when she had her first child, and uh, she was surrounded by mothers who were 20 years old or less, and uh, she ended up with the stigma called older mother. So, this is called Older Mothers. You older mothers, a younger had to say, spend too much time on your kids today. Seems you have nothing better to do than to analyze your baby's every coup. You take parenting classes, read books, watch tapes, thinking you can dodge every mistake. If you have a child, while in your 20s. They can nap through noise aplenty. Mothers over 35 want it quiet as a tomb, though they blasted out Mozart at the womb, all in an effort to create a genius, and heaven forbid we should circumcise a penis. <laughs> You're always trying to build self-esteem, Good job spews from your mouth in a never-ending stream. Between homework, helmets, and educational TV, your child is six and never scraped a knee. So take some advice from your younger sisters. Relax. Allow him and her to have a little blister. Who cares if your child has heard you cuss? They'll still be fucked up like the rest of us. <laughs> Thank you, Kimberly. <laughs> and it's true, my goodness. I had a child when I was 20. Could sleep through noise aplenty. <laughs>